All right, hello, welcome everybody to this uh, processing tutorial on how to use images. Uh, this is going to be a short one, but uh, I want to walk through these phases with you uh, just to make it perfectly clear how this works. So I'm going to be using Processing 3 uh, for this tutorial, and it's very important to start out by saying that one of the best ways to uh, learn how to do a lot of things in processing is to use the processing reference page. So if you ever want to uh, check this out, go to processing.org uh, and from there we have a little area that's just called reference in the left hand column. This is like a, an encyclopedia to all of the capabilities and uh, components to this processing programming language. So uh, if you were to really learn everything on this page you'd be in a, amazing shape. <laughs> But uh, from here, this is broken down into categories, we have something over here called this image category. Um, the part that we're going to be using a lot specifically for this tutorial, but early on in your processing usage here, is this thing called p-image. So I'll go ahead and click on that. Now on p-image, or if you can always remember the p here is for processing, so um, this p-image here, this gives us just the, the breakdown for how this works. So just to walk us through here, and I'll kind of uh, zoom in here a little bit. The p-image works just by creating a new class called p-image, so you're always going to have this thing here. Uh, the name of the variable, they're calling it photo, you can call it whatever you want, and I'll call mine something different so you see that. Uh, and then in the void setup, we're just going to be essentially determining what file we're going to be using to load in uh, into this thing, this kind of container called photo. Then in your void draw, we're actually going to be drawing the pixels of that image by using the command called image here. So let's, let's do this together. Uh, and I'm going to uh, just grab an image from Google um, just to kind of show you how this all works. I'm going to do a cupcake icon. And let's find one that we like. Um, yes, here's, here it is. I'll go ahead and save image as, and I'm going to save this to my desktop, and I'll call it cupcake.png. PNG is a file format that allows transparency in the background. That's why we can see this kind of uh, thing going on here with the grid. Uh, a JPEG, on the other hand, is another very viable option. It does not allow transparency, but um, works just as well. So uh, let's go back into here. So the first thing I'm going to do before really getting writing any code is to save my sketch because right now it doesn't really have a home. So I'm going to go ahead and do a file save as and I'm going to save this sketch to the desktop and I'm going to call this image example. Okay, very good. So now that I have uh, it saved in a location, one of the easiest ways to get the file that I want into uh, this processing folder so it's kind of located in a place that the program knows about is to go to the Finder if you're in uh, OS X or if you're in Windows, uh, Windows Explorer, and just to drag the file from its location in your kind of uh, file window right onto the processing sketch. Okay, as soon as I did that and I let go, here it says one file added to the sketch. Just so you all know exactly how that works is if I go back to my desktop and the image example folder, by dropping that file right onto the sketch, what processing did is it made a new folder inside of my image example folder called data. And inside of data, it, cop it made a copy of that picture file. So this is the location that our assets are always going to need to be in for it to read into processing. It's in the folder, a new folder called data, and cupcake. If I had six pictures, they could all go in the same data folder, but it needs to be lowercase lower data. All right, so it's called cupcake to PNG. Now, you know, in terms of writing this, um, like we had in the example, we're going to always start with uh, the class name, which is called PImage with a capital P, capital I. Call it whatever I want. I'm going to call it cupcake pick and just a semicolon. Next up, in the void setup here, and remember, void setup will only load stuff in once. I'll probably do two things. First of all, I'll just put in a size command. This will tell the program how large this uh, sketch will be. So I will go ahead and say the size might be 800 by 500. And then thirdly, we can say load image, or I'm sorry, uh, cupcake, cupcake pick. 
So we're always going to say uh, the name of the uh, P image that you made. Okay, so if you called this my friend, you would say my friend equals. Okay, so these two will always be the same here. So cupcake pick equals load image, and then open a parenthesis, and then in quote marks, the name of your picture file. In my case, it was cupcake.png, end quote mark. So we have to make sure we start and end the quote marks. If you do it successfully, only that part will be in purple. Everything else will uh, return back into kind of a black font. That means you closed off the quote marks well. And then a semicolon. So part one was this, to create a P image with nothing in it, but to free up the memory for a P image and give it a reference name. Oh, yep, yep, cupcake. Um, part two here will be to then tell the program, hey, Within this thing called the P image, I want to load in a specific image. And that's why we have the name of the file in quote marks. The third part will be to actually draw this. So let me do avoid draw. I'm going to put in just a background. Remember, a background will be any color that we want. So I'll just put in a background color here 200, 120 uh, by 75. And then finally, we're going to draw the image. So this is part three. It's just this term called image, open a parentheses. And then first, I'm going to put in the name of the P image and then the X and Y location of it. So the name was cupcake pick, comma, then the X position of it. Okay, now it's going to, by default, orient the position of this picture to the top left corner of it. So if I say 100 pixels over, comma, 100 pixels down, and then close this off in a semicolon, then when I run that, there it is, uh, floating there within the picture. So that's, that's great, as it should be. All right, and then so um, a couple other considerations when we do this. If we wanted the X and Y position to change, instead of 100, 100, we could say mouse X and mouse Y. Then when I do this, you can see it's kind of following the position of my mouse. Okay. If you don't like the idea of it orienting to the top left corner of the picture, in the void setup, we can add one more little parameter here, which is called image mode, and open a parenthesis. The default for this, by the way, is uh, corners. But if I say center instead, and then now I run that, now the middle of the picture is oriented to its location. So that's good. One more thing that you can do here, by default the image call has three parameters, the P image, the X position, and the Y position. You can put in a fourth and a fifth to change the scale of the picture here. Now this is not the, the best thing to do. The ideal in terms of processing speed and not stressing out your program is to have the width and the height of this picture set in Photoshop. So if, if it's too big by default, to take it into Photoshop and scale it down to say, 200 by 200 pixels. But if you're in a pinch and you need to do this very quickly, you can add a fourth and fifth parameter here. And I could say, I want my cupcake picture to be 150 pixels wide by 150 pixels tall. And then I'll rerun that. And now the picture is quite small. So that will kind of give you a lot of control over how this picture works. Just as a, an interesting little side note, if I were to take my void background, which is giving me kind of a clear slate, it's, it's uh, cleaning the screen every single frame, if I were to cut that out of the void draw and instead put that in the void setup and then rerun this, now you can see what's happening is it's turning that picture into like a paintbrush, right? Every single time, every frame, it's just leaving the old artifacts of what's been drawn and letting me draw another one which is kind of interesting. A, a final note that I want to make is that if you by chance want to load in an image uh, that's online and not have it local, and um, for the most part, you know, you probably would want to, just for predictability, you'd always want your images to be saved locally onto your machine. But if you wanted one to uh, be from offline or online, um, for example, I'm going to grab one of these cake images, if I were to just right click on this cake image and say uh, copy image location, that's just going to be the URL on the web for that. So you could essentially, you, you have the capability to pull a picture from online, load it in the void setup, and then use it. So right here where I am loading in this locally saved file called cupcake.png, if I delete that and instead paste in the URL for where this um, cake picture is, then when I run this, 
It'll take a little bit longer to go, but here's a picture of a cake. Uh, and it's good to know that when the void setup ran once, first it downloaded it from online. It's not saving it locally, but it's just kind of saving it within its own program as a reference. And uh, there we have that option as well. So those are all different ways to kind of work with an image in, uh, in processing. I hope this serves you well. And of course, there are many, many advanced things you can do. But if you ever forget how to do all this stuff or what these three kind of stages are, the p-image stage, the loading in stage, and then the drawing stage, I highly suggest you just remember the term p-image and then look p-image up in the processing reference. All right, thanks. That's all.